Hi everybody, this is Miss Murphy, and now we are on to part two of our continuous line portrait drawing. So what you need to have for this next step um, is a nine by 12 piece of paper. Um, you can simply fold your 12 by 18 paper in half and cut it into a nine by 12 piece of paper. Um, if you don't have that for some reason, you can also just do eight and a half by 11 piece of your sketchbook paper. But you wanna have a separate piece of paper so that you can eventually apply your watercolors to this. So we just did a practice previously where we did a continuous line drawing of ourselves using a photograph. So what you also need to have is an image reference that you're using a self-portrait so you want to have a picture that you took of yourself and I have mine up on my laptop so I can see it in front of me um, you could also use a mirror but I'm trying to do something that I look at that's still so I'm using that as a reference for myself or having your phone with a picture of yourself to look at but if you want it a little larger like I said you could print it out or you could have it on your laptop and enlarge it so um, we want to make sure that we consider the compositional use of space that we have here. So we want to make sure that our portrait is not too small. Just try to think about your hand when you put it in the center, and that's approximately where you're going to have your portrait. So we want to make sure that it's not too small and that it's taking up a good portion, maybe leaving a little neck. If you need to sketch out just a little bit there, but you know, if I put my hand on here, I know that my face is probably gonna be around that size with my hand kind of spread out. So even if you just kind of wanna sketch a little light uh, area for yourself so you know exactly where you're putting that in. All right, so now I'm going to start my portrait. And remember, since this is a continuous line, that means you're drawing using one continuous line to draw the subject, which is your portrait and the key is not to lift your drawing tool. So that means you're not lifting your pencil um, and you're drawing all of the contour lines that you see. So I'm going to start with my eye like I did before. So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna go move slowly. And I'm just going to go around my eye Now I'm gonna make sure this time that I remember to add, and sometimes I can retrace and go back to what I had. And now I'm going to draw my eyebrow up here. And the key to this is really to move your hand in the same speed that you're observing the information that is in front of you, which is your portrait. So I am going to continue my line down here and I know that I have my, my nose. I'm gonna come around. And remember, as I stated before, that it's not about looking perfect, that we're really creating an expressive portrait here. So nobody's is going to look incredibly detailed. And in a way, we're really just kind of capturing the energy and essence of ourselves when we look at this portrait. It's not a realistically drawn portrait, and we're really kind of capturing the energy of ourselves as we are observing. Sorry, I had to turn my computer back on there, and I inadvertently lifted a little bit, and that's okay. I forgive myself for my little mistake there. And you wanna avoid what I just did, but I had to do that because I moved because I had to turn my computer back on. My apologies. So. If you do have to lift up for a moment, just try to go right back to where you started so that you're continuing the line that you've already began. And I'm just going to go around and start making my the outline of my head here, remembering that I can always go back. And sometimes just drawing a double line just makes it a little more expressive so I'm gonna go around here to the best of my ability. And, you know, I'm gonna go back up here since I actually 
want to go back and add just a little more detail to what I didn't add already into my eye, more so than I did last time, because I just want my eye to really kind of pop out a little further this time, and then just try to get some of my like eyelashes and like some of the lines around here. And sometimes you might even capture a little bit of the shadow or edges around your eye a little bit further this time. So with this one, you wanna see if you can get a little more detail in your drawing. And I'm gonna go up here and draw the other side of my eye, my other eye that is, sorry. And I'm lifting so that you can see what I have so far because it's kind of hard for you to see unless I lift my pencil. But you want to avoid lifting your pencil and keep it steady as you are observing all of those details. I really try to pull out the details in my eyes because those really kind of capture the, you know, essence of your portrait. I'm going to go up here and add my other eyebrow. And as I go, remember I can always retrace and come back around if I need to. And I have a little bit of a line there and I'm going to come back around so that I can go down and I'm just going to pay, add a little more detail to my lip that I did before. So I'm just going to pull out some of that detail as well. And then, remember what I said, you can also add your hair. So I'm gonna add, start adding that now. And I always find that the more lines I add kind of like around the edges, the more expressive that it looks. And even when I have to retrace, it adds a little bit more character to my drawing. So I'm just gonna go up and down, kind of adding some of the waves in my hair here. and give it a little bit of a sense of layering in my hair as well, which you might wanna consider depending on what your hair looks like. And I'm gonna go back around here. And notice I'm not lifting my pencil. I'm just kind of, you know, sometimes I go around the edge first and then sometimes I just come back up and around. And so where I have my face my portrait placed in here is really where you want to have yours also because you want to have a little room for maybe even perhaps some of the details on your neck and shoulders <clears throat> and even if you go in and this line overlaps a little bit that's okay so i'm going to go around here and just remember what i said earlier that you're really taking your time to perceive and move your hand at the same speed that you're observing information. So generally, this is actually a type of drawing that's used as a drawing exercise, but it tends to lend itself to having a lot of character and energy in capturing, you know, forms when you're drawing it. Um, and it really enhances your ability to observe because you have to take your time and carefully go over all of those contour edges and ridges and like I'm doing right now I'm just going back over some of my details up here just to pull some of those out and you can even see if you have any highlights or shadows on your face so I'm just kind of going around the edge of my head here and see if there's any like shadows or areas that I want to pay attention to a lot of people compare this to creating a wire sculpture because if you had a piece of wire and you were creating a sculpture of your portrait, then you would have to create one continuous line and bend it around and towards the, those areas. So one thing I'm just mentioning here is looking at areas of contrast and value. So really you're perceiving all the lines that are visible, but you don't wanna lose the details that you see in terms of making it look like a portrait, of course. And there you have it. So I'm just going around back here so I can get some of my eyebrows in. And there you have it. So make sure you leave a little room out here on the bottom when you create your continuous line portrait so that you have room to add the details of your clothing or anything else that you have. 
and good luck with your next steps of your continuous line portrait.